it's converted in our hydrogen fuel cell application from hydrogen into electricity by the fuel cell stack and its associated system. It requires advanced battery technology, and each one of the eFlex vehicles is plug-in. This is a very, very important point vis-a-vis -vis where others have positioned themselves. We believe tapping into the electric grid, where eFlex vehicles will probably get an operating fuel cost of one to two cents a mile, versus at today's price of gas, 12, 13, 14 cents a mile, is quite a tremendous value proposition for our customers. And as we discussed, electricity and hydrogen can be generated through a wide range of sources. I-40 mines. It's one of the most off-cast questions, and many of you probably can answer it as well as I can right now. 40 miles delivers for most customers the opportunity to get petroleum-free time. The sizing of the battery, the charge time, all these equations, the package in the vehicle, all were considered relative to the delivery of 40 mile range. And we're pleased to report today, our target is still 40 miles of EV range, and that's what we're hoping to deliver to the market sometime in the future. What does the 40 mile do for us? It is 40 miles of emission and controlling free driving. It provides all of the capability, performance, functionality without any sacrifices. It optimizes the use of the grid and electricity. Some people will have to use fuel to create their electricity, the liquid fuel of petroleum to create electricity, but most people will use exclusively the grid. And what it does, this 40 mile range, as we discussed here briefly, it balances the amount of cost, mass, and associated complexity that the vehicle has to bear with what we think is a satisfactory, and frankly, an exciting driving experience for customers. I spoke about this briefly. It's very topical, particularly with the price of gasoline today, and it should be noted, a big benefit of the flex system. Some of the metrics that we're still tracking is vis-a-vis -vis a conventional small car. We're anticipating that the E-Flex vehicle driving 15,000 miles a year can save you 500 gallons of fuel. One vehicle, that amount of savings, and associated with that is the elimination of 4.4 metric tons of CO2 out of the tailpipe. Pretty significant impact for one vehicle. Of importance here is part of our process of sharing and making ourselves available and engaging the key stakeholders such as yourself is the discussion around what exactly is this vehicle. The definition you see in front of you is a def definition that's being used now by some of our key government agencies as they define this vehicle and establish standards. And I think it's important for you to read through it here quickly because it clearly defines the vehicle, highlighting some of the key points. Full performance electric vehicle. Energy is available from a battery, and an auxiliary energy supply is only engaged when the battery is unavailable. Key key points to distinguish it from a hybrid. Similarly, if you look at the chart below, we've categorized a few of the hybrid category of vehicles, and then how our particular extended range EV differs. And you can see, literally on every category, even compared to a plug-in hybrid. There are differences. Plug-in hybrids do not offer full electric drive. They do not have a high onboard storage given the 16 kilowatt hour battery we have. And they do not have electric motors that are high in power. How many hybrid vehicles have you driven for 25 miles an hour? They need help from the engine. Program status. I think it's quite evident this is a little bit more than a research project. It's a full-fledged production program. And we hope to share with you more news as we make progress and as we gain confidence to get more specifics on production dates and the like. We uh, are doing development work as indicated for both propulsion systems. With the extended range EV, the Chevy Volt being the lead application, the high volume application. But the presence of that vehicle, that its development efforts have enabled the possibility to keep fuel cell on our on our workload list, if you will, and we see a promising future for that sometime in the near future. We have a number of team members that we've assembled in order to make this a reality. Uh, 
least 150 some full-time technical engineering people. We've got a, a number of other functions and part-time people that do analysis workforce and support the program. We've recently transitioned 400 fuel cell engineers and specialists from our environment to a production-oriented program environment in our powertrain and our vehicle engineering center. So uh, those are clear signs that we're dead serious and we've got a, a full-fledged team engaged and working towards you know, our noble goal of delivering electrically driven vehicles that can provide emission-free and gas-free and as we indicated in previous communiques, we've got a separate design facility with a team in place led by Bob Boniface uh, and staff with some 25 interior and exterior designers that are operational and are working on our production version of Chevy Bolt. Now, we have to be honest, the program is not without risks. There are certain challenges that are in place we believe these challenges really can be categorized as engineering and development, not invention. Even as we relate and discuss the battery, cells exist in production form. This is the integration of these cells into an automotive ready, high volume pack that can survive and work within the dynamic environment that we place inside the vehicle. This program has been challenged to deliver first generation very quickly. And we're looking towards generations two and three so we can build upon what we've begun with this, with this very exciting project. The speed of the program challenges the following perspective, is working a vehicle and a battery simultaneously. And that is something that I don't think we've ever quite done before. But our team has accepted the challenge, we find it exciting and exhilarating. Denise will talk about it shortly about the battery developments. The first battery pack that we received, Denise will talk about, uh, has come in at 16 kilowatt hours. That's our requirement, that's our standard, that's the point we're at right now. So without further ado, I'm gonna have uh, Denise share with you a little bit more about our battery situation. 